Hello again and welcome back. And um, we're going to look at fifth chords and power chords right now. We've been spending, and you've been spending a lot of time learning a lot of open position chords. And uh, now we're going to move into like the precursor to bar chords. And these are very, very important series of chords we're going to learn. And they're really going to help open up the door to a lot more songs, a lot more fun, a lot more creativity. Um, it's going to just blow the doors wide open. Wide open. You won't believe it. Here's why. In the past, in order to play like a D chord, right, you would play the fingering for a D chord, and then you'd play like a D, then you'd have to change that fingering into a whole new shape to play like a C, then you'd have to change that again to play like a G. But with power chords and fifth chords and bar chords, when we get to those, you're keeping your hand in the same formation, the same cluster or voicing, and then to play a different, like an A to a G, you just slide that whole thing around. Or to a D, you're just sliding it to the different root note. You know what I'm saying? So it's, it makes this uh, very easy for chord changing because you're just basically sliding the same shape around. Now I'm going to give you a close-up shot of this in a second. Um, um, but what I'm talking about is you can play stuff like this, like where you'd be um, playing on the fifth string. See, I'm keeping the keeping the shape the same as I'm moving the chord. You know what I mean? So it's not like you have to totally change into a whole nother configuration. It's beautiful, you know? Totally beautiful. You can play like... I just went through five or six chords there without even changing the shape at all. Um, so um, it's, a, it's a really fun and easy way to start moving stuff around. And you could do the same thing we're going to be doing on the sixth string. See? Same shape. Except for that E fifth at the end there. Okay. So what am I doing? How is this miracle performed? And let's get into it. Let's play guitar. Okay. So let me just uh, come in nice and close so you can see the guitar neck. And you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. Okay. Now. Here we are, 1st fret, 2nd fret, 3rd fret, right? I'm going to show you right here, all right? Now, we're going to, I'll even actually get a little closer for you, right? Okay, so to play a 5th chord, a 5th chord is we're basically talking about two notes, a root and its 5th, and I'll get into chord construction later, and there'll be a whole module on chord construction, you could watch that, and, it'll, and you'll understand what this means, what's a 5th, what's a 3rd, what, what's a flat seven, okay? It's, it's very easy. It all is based off the major scale. All music theory goes back to the major scale, and we all know the major scale. It's just do, re, mi, fa, so, la, di, do, right? And you know that song. Do, uh, what is do? Do, do's a deer. Thanks, Tim. Do's a deer. Sound a female. Music. Sound of music. Sound of music. A female deer. Ray, a pack of golden sun. No, a drop of oh. golden sun. That's a pack of golden sun. What the hell is that? A drop of golden sun, right? Okay, so uh, everyone knows that scale, point being, that's the major scale. Do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti, do. If I play it on the guitar. Say, do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti, do. Na, 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 na. Okay. Anywho, um, so we're going to play, and don't worry about, you don't know what a fifth is. We're going to get to that. So the shape that you're going to be playing for fifth chords is... Whatever the name of the chord is, for instance, if it's an F, this is an F note here. This is the first fret on the low E string. So you're going to put your first finger there, and you're going to take your third finger and put it, just go down two frets and down one string. And that's basically its fifth. And you get this fifth chord. There's my other two fingers moved out of the way. Here's another look at it. That's a fifth chord. And you'll see this written out as like F with a 5 next to it. Okay, and that's what a 5th chord is right there. This note. And this note. So, I'm just playing these two strings. I'm not playing the D, the G, the B, or the high E. It's only a 2 note chord, just a root in its 5th. I'm just getting my other fingers out of the way. You'll be playing it like this, with your fingers close and your pinky tucked in. That's the chord. Now if I wanted to change that, let's say I wanted to play a G fifth. All I have to do is move the whole chord up a whole step, or two frets. F fifth. Now to play a G fifth, these, this 
stays the same, this shape, this voicing, and I just move it up, and now it's a G. If I want to play an A fifth, move it up again, it's an A. And the reason is, and we're going to get into this, is you have to know the notes on the neck or the 12-note scale. This is an F at the first fret, F sharp, second fret, G, third fret, low E string, G sharp, fourth fret, low E string, A. So just put your first finger on the root note, or the, 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 the tonic, it's also called, and there's my F fifth. It sounds like this. Kind of heavy sounding. Now, if I move that up a whole step, or two frets, what's a, that's what a whole step is, two frets, a half step is one fret. Um, now, I'm on, the main or root note is the G, and I play that same, it's basically just go down one string and over two with your third finger, and there's its fifth, and that is a G5. That's what that sounds like. If I go up another whole step, that's an A5, A5, back a whole step, that's an A flat or G sharp 5. You know, you might have heard that Nirvana song where they went, uh, about a girl. That whole part he's playing now, he plays uh, the fifth string on the fifth string, which we'll get to in a second, but he's playing that C sharp fifth to the G sharp fifth to the F sharp fifth in that part of the song. So these fifth chords are very great chords because you could just slide them around and get the different names. You don't have to go into a whole new fingering. Not like here's a D, here's a G, here's a C, like you know all your open position chords. Here you just go, oh, I want my F. You can do this, it's easy. Here's my F, you wanna to go to a G, just slide down all stuff, there's my G. You wanna to go to the A, there's my A fifth. Okay, it's only two notes and you could do this, okay? If you want to make it into a power chord, you might have heard that term before. The power chord is just three notes. We're going to add one note, and it's very easy. Here's my F fifth, basically, where I'm playing the, the root and the fifth, the two notes. Now, to play the power chord, you're just going to slide your pinky right underneath your third finger. For instance, for the F, right on the D string. So now we're only going to play three strings, the low E, the A string. That's our fifth strings for our fifth. And there's is, you're going to play that F note again, so you play the octave. And you see it all here, so I'm only playing these three strings. I'm not playing these other three. And that's the power chord. It's a three note chord. Okay? Now technically, you know, and again, very formally, you might have someone say, well, technically a chord has to be three or more notes. You know, technically. And if it's only two notes, that's called an interval. Technically, that's true, but some people define a chord as two or more notes. Any two or more notes, at least two or more notes played together. Some people define it as three or more notes played together. You want to know what? It doesn't matter. Either one. The main thing is you're either playing two notes together or three notes together, okay? I'm from the school of two or more notes together is a chord, so this is an F fifth chord, all right? You don't hear anyone call this F fifth interval. They always say play the F fifth chord, okay? So... F fifth, and if you want to make it a power chord, just add your pinky. And what that does is it kind of thickens up the sound because you have an extra note, and it's the octave. It's the same note as you're playing with your first finger, but just 12 frets higher. That's the octave. So the, the, po the uh, power chord sounds like this. See, I got all three. Here's the fifth chord. I'm only playing two. Here's the power chord, three. See, fifth chord, two, power chord, three. So it's a little heavier, very similar sound. Let me give you another shot of this. Now notice on the power chord, two, my third finger is attached to that second finger like we always do it, right? Right in tight. So it, it, again, when you're playing the fifth chord, your pinky should not be out here flailing in the wind. Even on the fifth chord, keep it tight. This way, if you want to go to the power chord, bang, and just pop it right there. So that's it, people. That's all you have to know for this low E string Right? No matter where you're at on it, first set, bracket, first fret, second fret, third fret, fourth, fifth, whatever, you can play that power chord. F, F sharp fifth, G fifth, G sharp fifth. See, you just move down a fret at a time, and as you move down, the, ch the chord changes, the shape stays the same, but it changes to whatever this note is. So we have to learn the notes on the low E string, if you haven't learned them yet, and I'll really get them down cold, you know, up here. Here I am, way up here at the 7th fret. This is a B note, right there. 
A notes here. Whole step is a B. So if I play that shape with just the first and third finger, that fifth, that's a B fifth. See how that works? It's great. That's the low E string. The same exact rules apply for the A string fifth and power chords. The shape is the same. Where you use your first finger, here I am. Now this is a B flat note at the first fret. I'm on the A string now. That's a B flat. So you just put your first finger there and your third finger goes two frets and one string down on the D string. On that F note. And that is a B flat fifth. Now I am not playing the low E string. I'm only playing the A string and the D string. That's the only two that you're going to do. Just the A and the D. My first finger I let come over the string as I'm fretting this note a little bit and it touches the low E string and it mutes it. So for all these fifth string root chords, fifths and power chords, you want to have this finger mute the low E string because otherwise, see I won't mute it, see it really muddies up the chord, you gotta mute it just by moving that finger up, see, and it touches it. When it touches this low E string, it mutes it so you won't hear it. And that's the chord. You can hit all three, but you're only going to hear two. See, now I'm hitting all three strings, but you're only hearing the A and the D because this string is muted. See? I'm hitting all three, but this one's muted, the low E. So, again, it's the same rules as on the sixth string, these fifth string root fifth chords. And if you want to play the power chord, again, just put your pinky right on that same uh, fret as the third finger right here. We're doing the third fret to play this B flat fifth. Now it becomes a B flat power chord. You might just see that written as B flat. Technically the, the full major chord would be this, which we'll learn later, but you might not be able to bar that yet, have the strength, so we're just going to do this. So this is B flat, B flat chord. Technically it's not considered the major chord until we add one more note to it. We got to add the third. Now, same thing, let's say I move it up a half step. My first finger goes from the B flat, that's a B note. Now remember I'm on the fifth string, not the sixth string. Fifth string, that's my B. So now, if I move up from here to here, I have a B fifth. B power chord. Same shape, move up a half step. C power chord. Playing three string, here's my C fifth, just that little two string chord. All right, go up another half step. This is now on a C sharp. Isn't that wonderful? I could just slide these around and we're going to be playing some songs very shortly and some riffs where you're sliding them around. So you can just slide that around in that same shape and you get all those chords. Okay? That's basically what this fifth chord, fifth chords, <laughs> try to say that three times fast. Fifth chords, fifth chords, fifth chords. I did it! What do I win, Tim? Trip to Brazil. Trip to Brazil, I've been there. That's a great place to go. If you've never been to Brazil for carnival and you love music, man, you should consider it. Salvador is the place to go in Brazil for carnival. Rio is nice for carnival, but it's a little more parade-like. I like the street carnival with the music, and that's in Salvador. Best carnival in Brazil. Anywho, I digress. Let's get back to playing music, right? Okay, so these chords are very important because as you can see, you can just slide them around. You don't have to worry about changing the shapes. So it's much, much, in some regards, a little easier. Now we're going to turn them into full bar chords, but for now we're going to be using these fifth chords and the power chords in a lot of songs. And um, I want you to start practicing them. And just slide, as soon as you get the hang of it, you'll be like, wow, this is easy. You know, because I could just easily go from an F to a G to an A to a B. And I'm just sliding this chord. I'm keeping the shape or the voicing the same. On the low E string, you want to use these a lot. And also on the A string. Here it is on the A string. B flat. B. C. C sharp. D. I go all the way up. B flat. E. F. F sharp. G. G sharp. A. Because that first finger was on that A note. Okay, that's how you tell the root. Alright? So, there, we've gotten tons and tons of emails and lots of questions about these fifth chords and power chords and how does that work and, and that's all. It seems like it's, it, it would be a very difficult thing but it's actually it's very easy. So fool around with that, get that fingering down and we're going to start using them in application on some songs. 
Because remember, we apply everything that we're doing here at Next Level Guitar. Whatever you learn, you have to apply it. And you can apply it through your practicing and through learning popular songs. And what more fun way than that? Learning songs, because when you're done, you have a song in your pocket. I got another song. Outstanding. All right? So, and these chords are used a lot, too, when you're playing with a lot of distortion and a lot of gain and that real rock sound. For instance, you know, like I played that Black Sabbath thing before. Played it all with those power chords, or you can do it with the fifth chords. Now, if I play the full major chord sometimes, and if you have a lot of gain, sometimes on some chords, the full six string chord will start to get muddy because with all the distortion, the frequencies start to hit, and I'll, I'll show you that later. So you're going to be using these power chords. Even uh, someone who's at a higher level player is not a beginner, maybe intermediate events, they still use a lot of power in fifth chords because they sound really good, especially if you're using a lot of gain. Okay, so I want you to uh, review these chords and then go to the chord library and you could look at them in depth and really we really focus in on them okay and learn them and get them in your back pocket because they're gonna be your best friends people you just have a new companion alright and I'll see you in the next module